So like I said, I'm Riley Myhaver. I'm an admission counselor for Stonehill College. Stonehill is a small liberal arts Catholic institution in Easton, Massachusetts, which is about 20 miles south of Boston and kind of 30 miles, you know, northeast of Providence. So it's a little bit more in a suburban area, but there's definitely access to the cities. Um, students can go on the weekends, do internships in Boston and Providence and everything, which is kind of a great opportunity for our students on campus. Um, Stonehill was founded in 1948 by the Congregation of Holy Cross. So our mission is very much to educate the whole student. So instead of just educating the mind of a student, we want to make sure to educate the mind as well as the heart. So allowing students to have a community and make connections on campus, as well as learn what they might want to study um, and learn in some other areas of study as well. So during your time at Stonehill, you will take about one third of courses, you know, for your major and minors. And so that will comprise like one third of your time. One third of your courses will be for our, cor our cornerstone program, which is our, our take on the general education requirements. So you just have a few kind of subject heads that you have to cover in your four years at Stonehill. And that's, again, a way to educate the whole student, not just in one area of study. Um, and then one third of your classes will be electives or courses that you might just be more interested in and might not be for a major or anything. We have about 2,400 students right now. Our current freshman class is 640, so it's a pretty small school, um, but the campus is a little bit bigger, so it doesn't feel too much like you're kind of stuck in the same spot. There's always new places to go and see and new people to meet, which is a really nice size. We're about 83% residential, so about 83% of our students currently live on campus, 17% kind of commute from the local communities. Um, that being said, you are guaranteed housing all four years. So if um, you want to live on campus all four years, you don't have to worry about not having housing available to you. So let's say um, someone lived in Brockton, which is, you know, right next to Stonehill. They would be able to live on campus for a year, maybe commute for a year, and then switch back to living on campus. So it's very easy to have access to housing. You never have to worry about, like, finding your own housing off campus. It's guaranteed all four years. So continuing, like, what I was saying about it being a smaller, a smaller institution, our average class size is about 17. I think the biggest class I've heard of is like 40 something students. So pretty small in comparison to maybe some of the bigger schools around. And the bigger lecture halls are built for 100 to 200 people, but I've never seen, like I said, more than 40 or 50 students in one of those classes. So it's really nice to be able to get to know your professors one on one. Our average student to faculty ratio is 11 to one. So like I said, getting to know your professors at a pretty um, close range, getting to know them pretty personally, which is really nice. Um, on here and in the pamphlet is a breakdown of some of the majors and some of the more popular majors and just what students choose to do on campus. I'm not going to go through all the majors, but if you have specific questions, I'm more than happy to talk about any of the subjects that we have. Um, are there any questions so far, or do you want me to just kind of keep telling you a little bit about Stonehill? Perfect. So Stonehill is very focused on the idea of experiential learning and educating students in and outside of the classroom. So through those, we have four pillars, four ways to study outside the classroom. We have study abroad, we have internships, we have research, and we have service. And so about 40% of our students pre-COVID um, studied abroad for a semester, usually in their junior year. Obviously with COVID, it looks a little bit different. We actually don't have any students abroad right now just for safety reasons, but we're hoping to bring it back in the spring, but if not, in the fall of next year. So hopefully we'll be able to send students, you know, abroad again sometime soon. About 80% of our students complete one internship during their time at Stonehill, and approximately half of the students complete more than one. So that really goes to show how Stonehill really kind of prioritizes wanting you to have the work experience before you leave and want to help build your resume while you're still a student at Stonehill. Another way to build your resume is research. If STEM is something you're interested in, or even if it's not STEM, you can do our SHRE program, which this is the Stonehill Undergraduate Research Experience. And so you can study one-on-one -on -one with a professor and do research with them in kind of um, an area of your choosing, which is a really nice way to kind of dive deeper and have those one-on-one -on -one connections with a professor or a mentor kind of over the summer. It's like an eight-week program. It's a great opportunity, like I said, to build your resume and to have more practice at the graduate level while still in your undergraduate education. Any questions so far? No? Okay, perfect. I know I'm just kind of, you know, saying a lot of information to you. Um, 
So one question I know a lot of students have is kind of how do you actually apply? Um, what do we require? What are our dates for applying? All of that. So a lot of the information is on the back of the paper I gave you. Our average GPA for high school students is about a 3.36. Although we rescale um, GPAs to a 4.0 unweighted GPA, so we look at everyone's kind of on the same scale, but we also take into consideration your academic rigor, um, how your classes kind of have progressed over your four years, how hard they were, how much, like I said, kind of how far you've come in your four years in high school. So we really like to see students who have kind of built up a nice, you know, four years of different subjects that they're interested in and kind of showed progress as a student during their four, four years in high school. We use the common application like a lot of the other schools you're going to be applying to and hearing from. We require two recommendations, one counselor, one teacher, um, and then just the basic common app. We also have our own supplemental page, so a few questions that are just not on the normal common application that we like to ask students just to kind of see maybe why Stonehill is, is the school for you. We are test blind, so we do not look at the SAT at all or ACT. Um, if you send us your scores, we're not going to consider them, so maybe just send them to other schools that might, might actually consider them if that's something that you're taking and something that you're proud of. Um, Stonehill doesn't consider them because with COVID last year, a lot of students couldn't access the SATs and ACTs, and we found a lot of success in kind of not having standardized testing being a huge part of our application process. Our average cost of attendance currently for room and board and tuition together is about 64000 Although 99% of our students do receive some sort of financial assistance, which comes in three different forms. Merit scholarships, or scholarships you know based on GPA, grades, um, academic rigor, extracurriculars, stuff like that. You don't have to apply for those separately. You're automatically put in the running for them. If you are admitted to Stonehill, you'll automatically be considered for a merit scholarship to come with your acceptance. We also have need-based assistance, which is what you would um, get by filling out the FAFSA and the CSS profile and then we have athletic scholarships which if I don't know if any of you are athletes but if you are and you want to kind of continue athletics in college be in contact with the coach at Stonehill um, and they'll really be able to kind of help navigate you through that process as well. I think that's most of my you know one-off spiel. Uh, <laughs> does anyone have any questions about you know programs that Stonehill has to offer? I know we were talking about campus tours a little bit um, anything else I can answer for you about Stonehill in general? Mm -hmm. Approximately 3.3, 3.4, um, but it, below it it does say like our middle 50%, so the middle 50% of our applications are between a 3.1 and a 3.6. So 3.36 is just the average. It doesn't mean if your GPA is below that or above that like you won't get accepted. It's just kind of what we found to be the average in the past few years. Are there any other questions about anything Stonehill has? I know I just kind of spit a lot of information out at you. Do you want to take a minute to look over anything? We don't have a nursing program, so on the back of, um, or sorry, the front of the fast back sheet, in the bottom right corner, you can see kind of our professional school acceptance rates and everything. So we don't have a nursing program in our undergrad, but we do have students who will come to undergrad and get maybe a bio or a chem degree, and then kind of extend to nursing school or PA school, PT, anything like that kind of after Stonehill. Um, so we don't have the undergrad nursing program, but we have students who will continue on to do that. Yeah, so we were founded by, like I said, Congregation of Holy Cross. And so our mission is definitely kind of surrounded around kind of the Catholic education, which really just means providing education to every student, believing that everyone deserves an education, that everyone deserves kind of a holistic education. So like I was saying with the educating, like the whole student, like kind of your mind and as well as what you're interested in. Nice, good major. That was my major in college. Um, I would say our neuroscience program, from what I've heard, is excellent. Um, we have a very, like, pretty new state-of-the-art, like, science 
science building with wet labs and dry labs for like you know physics and chemistry versus like bio and psych so it's a really nice space for students to kind of do all their studying and learning in a very like kind of condensed environment you'll have a lot of classes kind of in that one building um, and I think another thing that really helps with the neuro program is the research that I was talking about it's super possible to be able to study one-on-one -on -one with a professor and do research either during a semester or during your um, kind of summers with a professor and kind of get that research experience um, at the level but I can also get, I can also put you in contact with someone um, in neuro that will obviously know a little bit more than I do about the program if that's something you're interested in mechanic yeah so all of our majors and minors are in the on this side right here so we have a, a few different kinds of engineering so currently we have a dual enrollment program with us in Notre, uh, Notre Dame College so you would do two years at one and three years at the other for engineering um, but they're also kind of integrating um, other engineering just at Stonehill as well so they we do have that as an option engineering is definitely a pretty pretty big major at um, Stonehill whether it's mechanical or just kind of any any option but engineering is something I've met a lot of students who are very kind of involved and it's a pretty rigorous program <laughs> sorry what did you say Mm -hmm. Yeah, in order to be a neurologist, I would assume you'd have to go to some form of med school. So it's usually about the average for like med school to become a doctor is usually seven years post grad. So four years undergrad, seven years in medical school. Um, I don't know for a neurologist specifically, but I would assume it's probably pretty similar. Um, I know for physical therapy and um, occupational therapy, it's usually between two and four years, depending on the program. If you're going full-time versus part-time is also different for programs like that. So I would say definitely a few years after that. And if you want to kind of go and be like in the, you know, doctorate realm, I would say seven is probably a prime number around there. But at Stonehill, we just have kind of the basic undergraduate programs. We have five master's programs currently as well. So we are kind of moving towards also being a graduate school. But currently, we only have a few masters available to students, which include like education and social work. Um, we don't have a like med school attached to Stonehill currently. So you're going to find that at most schools, especially with going to med school, just because it is a post grad education so usually you'll go to undergraduate for four years to get your bachelor's of either arts or science in let's say you wanted to do neuroscience um, you would get your bachelor's of science in neuroscience at Stonehill or another institution and then in your senior year you start applying to med schools a lot of students also take a gap year and kind of work and everything in the middle um, but you would apply to med schools get accepted into a med school and then you'd go on to that um, institution postgrad and that's going to be pretty similar to what you're going to find at other schools a lot of schools don't um, enter you as an undergraduate like into the med school program. Those are pretty rare. Is there anything else I can answer for anyone? To have your vaccine? Yeah, currently all students are required to have the vaccination on campus. We're also getting tested once a week. Um, so we all always know how many levels of, you know, kind of how many cases of COVID we have on campus. Hmm? Also currently um, Stonehill is having everyone wear masks every time they're inside but if you're outside you can take your mask off and kind of be around you know your friends and everything um, but for classes and meetings and everything inside we're all like distancing and wearing masks just to you know keep levels low on campus because obviously we want to be able to stay on campus the whole year. Yeah, we're Division Two for all of our sports. We have, I want to say, 22 different sports on campus at the varsity level, but we also have club and intramural sports as well. And like I said, if you are 
interested in kind of continuing the sport um, at kind of the collegiate level, all of the coaches are right on our athletics page on the Stonehill website. So if that's something that is interesting to you, I would definitely reach out to the coach either to have, like if you did come for a campus tour, to either be able to visit with the coach as well or maybe virtually chat with them over the phone, just to kind of gauge your interest so they can also hear from you as well because academics are um, one thing and then um, the coaches usually deal with the athletic aspect of that. So do you play a sport? Are you looking to continue one? Nice. I was thinking about mm-hmm. I want to focus on Yeah, you can always talk to the coach and just kind of um, gauge, like, how, maybe how intense during that season it would be. So, like, if it's a fall sport, like, how many times a week you'd practice and how many games there'd be, um, they'd be more than happy to just kind of chat with you. And it wouldn't be, like, a binding commitment, like, if you come, you have to play field hockey or whatever the sport is. Um, you could just kind of talk to them and say, like, hey, this is what I'm interested in and I want to be able to focus on my academics. Like, how possible would that be? Anything else I can answer for you at all? So for our fall programming, we are only doing campus tours right now. We're not doing kind of open house or anything just to keep numbers on campus smaller um, each day. So we're doing six families go out on a tour together with two tour guides. Um, You can bring up to, I want to say it's three family members. So parents, siblings, aunts, uncles, guardians, anyone who would come with you or by yourself, also perfectly acceptable. Um, We're doing them at 2 and 10 every weekday and then we have tours going out between 9 and 11 and 1 and 3 on Saturdays so plenty of opportunities to come visit campus I know it's like an hour and a half drive from here so if I know weekends are probably a little bit easier it's not something you could just kind of go in an afternoon and go visit just because it is a little bit farther away so um, if that's something that's interesting to you I know we had chatted about this at the beginning Um, I can send you the link for signing up for campus tours we also have some videos online that they had done with COVID because people could only do self-guided tours. We weren't kind of having proctored tours with tour guides. So I can send that link as well if you just want to kind of be able to see campus a little bit more. How many like dormitories? There is a lot of housing at Stonehill. Um, I think one of the really nice features about campus is that we have a bunch of different styles of living. So we have like more house living, apartment style, suite living, as well as just like your basic dorms. So the way campus is set up, it's like athletics on one side and the middle is all your academics and most of the housing is kind of on the other side. So we have, I don't know the exact number of dorms, but there are a ton (laughs) of dorms on campus. Like I was, when I took my tour, I was like amazed at how much housing they had on campus. And there's a lot of different options, whether you want kind of quiet housing or, um, you know, air conditioning versus no air conditioning, like kind of how all that works. Like um, the way that like housing works, you have a roommate all all four years typically, um, unless you kind of become an RA and then you can have a single on campus. But the way that housing works your freshman year. I know that that's something that stresses a lot of students out, especially if you don't know anyone going into the school. We have a roommate survey, so basic questions would be like, when do you go to bed? Um, Do you like to study in your room? Are you fine with people coming in your room? Like basic living questions like that. And so you fill out the survey and everyone else fills it out too and we pair you together based on someone you would live well together with. Um, That being said, if you did know someone also going to Stonehill or you met someone at orientation, you can also put on your housing form like I want to live with this person and as long as you both put each other you should get housed together as well. Mhm. Yeah so freshman year you'll definitely be in some some form of dorm it won't be like kind of the apartment style living those are more for um, I've heard of sophomores who have apartments or houses like kind of like townhouses sometimes it's like four or five different doubles of students living in a house together but obviously smaller than a big dorm but your freshman year, you'll likely be in more of the dormitory style living. And then sophomore through senior year, there's a housing lottery that you enter either by yourself or with friends. So if, like, let's say a group of five of you or six of you wanted to enter housing together, your lottery numbers would kind of be averaged, and that would be when your housing would kind of pick where you wanted to live.
I know it's hard to think of all of the questions that you have about a school when, you know, kind of the rep is here. So I can also, um, I left my business card with your counselor. I can also give anyone else a business card if you have any other questions. I know um, if you wanted me to send you kind of the tour guide thing, if you want to shoot me an email, I'd be more than happy to send you that link. Um, and if any other questions, you know, arise, any issues, or maybe you're coming to campus and you just want to kind of um, check in and let me know, you're more than welcome to email me at any point. Um, I, I always have my phone with me, even if I'm <laughs> traveling around. I'll be in New York next week and stuff, but I'll be around. So. Do you do this to schools or is it some? Um, I do it kind of just, I group schools together. So I've been kind of in the Springfield area the past three days. Um, so Springfield up through Greenfield, I've been doing some schools in kind of that area. Um, and then next week I'll be in New York. The week after I'll be in New Hampshire. So just kind of grouping schools together um, that I can hit. And it's really been nice to be able to kind of group schools that are only like 15 minutes away. So I was at um, Ludlow High School this morning. So yeah, Ludlow <laughs> this morning. Um, so super easy to get around, but it's really nice to be able to kind of talk to students and hear from the students who will be coming in next year who might be interested in Stonehill and help ease your college decision a little bit because I know it can be a st stressful process. Well, if anyone does think of any other questions, like I said, shoot me an email. Um, even if for some reason you don't get my email today, you can, um, if you go on the Stonehill website, there's a spot where you can like type in your high school and it'll say who's your guidance, who your um, admission counselor is. So that's another way that you can find anyone you're looking for on there as well. It was great to chat with you all. Um, I hope you have, I hope you have, you know, some good luck with your college <laughs> search process, and I hope it's not too stressful.